Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to all our Guru Maharajas, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, and all glories to you, Maharaj. Maharaj, if, um, we will be studying today from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter Number 9, Text 48. Whenever you are ready, Maharaj, you can take the call over Hare Krishna. And happy Ekadashi Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevayu Tum Vayu Agni Tum Vayu Agni Avinir Vidu Amba Matram Pranendriyani Ridayam Chiranugrahas Chan Sarvam Tum Eva Saguna Vigunas Chabumam Nanyatvam Asta Pirmano Vachasadi Ruptam Translation, O Supreme Lord, you are actually the air, the earth, fire, sky, and water. You're the objects of sense perception, the life airs, the five senses, the mind, consciousness, and false ego. Indeed, you are everything subtle and gross. The material elements and anything expressed either by the words or by the mind or nothing but you. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada's report. This is the all-pervasive conception of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which explains how he spreads everywhere and anywhere. Sarva Kalamidam Brahma. Everything is Brahman, the Supreme Brahman Krishna. Nothing exists without him, as the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 9.4. Maya tadam midam sarvam jagarabhyakti murtina matstani sarvabhutani nacham tvesharastitaha. I exist everywhere and everything exists in me, yet I'm not visible everywhere. The Lord can be visible only through devotional service. Tatra tisami narada yantra gayan madbhakta. The Supreme Lord stays only where his devotees chant his glories. Om Timirandasya Gnajana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gauri Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Vipa Sindhu Paevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyana Mahona Maha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktivindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare It's actually all of creation and all of uh, May, uh, all of creation and all that exists within both the original manifestation of the spiritual world and the material world falls into two categories of description. Both signify the same point. And that is, there are only two things. There is Krishna and there is Krishna's energy. When we use the example of the sun, we understand things very clearly. 
the sun is localized in one place, but it spreads its sunshine, its rays throughout the universe. Although the sun is one, it manifests itself in many in the form of its energy. So there's no question of separating the sun from the energy or the sunshine. And so there's no question of separating Krishna from everything that exists because everything that exists falls into three categories of existence. Antaryami Shakti, uh, uh, Bahir Shakti, and Tatasta Shakti which means there's three categories. One is the spiritual energy. One is the material energy. And Tatasakti is the living entities in the material energy, which are spiritual, but covered by the material energy. So these are the three categories of existence. Antaryami, or Anta, Antaryami and, and Bahir Shakti, and Tatasta Shakti. These are, the, these are the three manifestations of all of the energies of the Lord, which comprise both all spiritual and material existence. So when one sees something separate from Krishna, one is seeing improperly, or one is seeing what is called illusion or maya. Nothing is separate from the Lord, and ultimately, everything is controlled by the Lord at the same time that nothing is separate by the Lord. He is also the supreme controller of everything. He maintains things. <clears throat> he creates things. And he ultimately, through his energies, he winds up everything that of the created nature. <laughs> so when one understands this principle, clearly that there's nothing outside of Krishna. <laughs> One cannot so find something that is outside of the Lord because nothing exists outside of the Lord, as it says here. Nothing exists without him. And one who knows, using the example of the sun, the sun and the sunshine are never separated. So Krishna and his energies are never separated. Although the energies are working in different ways, according to his desire, still, he's, they're all connected ultimately in all activities and all results of activities, we should say. There's always two causes, the immediate cause and the remote cause. Immediate cause is what we see. Uh, the remote cause is what you don't see. And the remote cause is the source of the immediate cause. Krishna is the remote cause. Ishwara Parma Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha and Adir Adir Govinda Sarva Karanam. Here Nitya Nityanam Chaitan is Chaitananam Eko Bahudam Viradati Kam Mam. He is the cause of all causes. He's the source of all of the energies. There's no one greater than him, no one equal to him. He is one and he maintains everything else through his different energies. Now this is a, this is a very succinct, very simple definition of the absolute truth. When you know that, then you realize we are never anything else but an energy of Krishna. And therefore, we belong to Krishna. <laughs> we are never separated from Krishna. Separation from Krishna is just the, the idea of the separation from Krishna. There's no such thing as separation from Krishna. <clears throat> just like when you go to sleep at night, you lose consciousness of your waking existence, your physical body. <clears throat> and you may be in a dream state dreaming about something that is different. But still, your physical body exists there. And then after some time, you'll come back to it. In the same way, we are always connected with Krishna, 100%, never 90% or 99.9%, 100%. 
but we're covered by this energy, which is due to our desire to become separate from Krishna. <laughs> and because of our desire to become separate from Krishna, we think we are separate from Krishna. But we're not. <laughs> and because we think we're separate from Krishna, we act separate from Krishna. And that means we try to enjoy what Krishna has created for his own enjoyment. As it says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhaktaram Yagya Tapasam Sarvaloka Maheshwaram Suhidam Sarvabhutanam Shantam 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 Yantam Rich Chiti. I mean, he is the foundation by which all the planets move. He's the controller. He's the maintainer. And ultimately, when he wants, he becomes the destroyer. And at the same time, he, he is the uh, he is the supreme enjoyer. Bhokta. Bhokta means enjoyer. But not enjoyer. He is the initial enjoyer. So we want to enjoy, but we, we are foolishly trying to enjoy separate from Krishna, therefore we can't enjoy. <laughs> and that is the problem. The conditioned souls under the influence of, of Krishna's external energy think themselves separate from Krishna and try to make an arrangement for their own enjoyment by manipulating the energy of Krishna in different ways. That is called maya or material energy. So and that that goes on until either we get frustrated in our attempt to enjoy or the time element pushes us outside of our particular situation and we no longer have that facility in the in the present situation. So but one who is actually understanding if Krishna is everything and I belong to Krishna and there's nothing separated from him Everything is part of his ex creation and existence. It's ultimately all meant for his enjoyment. I am also meant for his enjoyment. I also enjoy when I'm connected with him, making his enjoyment my uh, focus in life. Then I actually enjoy. This is the uh, secret of enjoyment. If you want to enjoy, make Krishna enjoy, <laughs> then you will enjoy <laughs> But if you try to enjoy separately from Krishna, you create a false situation. Um, it's just like, well, I tried to enjoy in this material world, and therefore I decided to steal something. And so I got caught, therefore I was thrown into prison. But now I'm in prison, I have to figure out how I'm going to enjoy in the prison now. Well, now now my, my opportunities for enjoyment have become limited due to my being locked up in a, in a more of a confined existence. So we tried, we can enjoy with Krishna, but we decided not to, and therefore we're trying to enjoy without him now. By taking this, this compromised position, being in the material world, having to undergo so many natural forms of suffering, such as birth, death, disease, and old age, Miseries of the body and mind, miseries of other powers, miseries of other living entities, higher powers. All of these things are placed upon the living entity because of their ignorance of their actual position and their relationship with the absolute truth. And therefore, the way to come back is also mentioned in this verse here very nicely. It says here, the trap. Tatratistami Narada, Yantra Gayanti Madhbhakta. Where do you find Krishna? And this is a very interesting verse. It's from the Padma Purana. And it explains that Krishna speaks this verse himself. Madhbhakta. He says, my bhakti. He he's talking to Narada Muni. He says, Narada, you're not going to find me in the hearts of the yogis. Don't look there. You're not going to find me in my in my, in the planets in the Vaikuntha world. You're not going to find me in the spiritual world. Don't look there. I'm not there. <laughs> Where are you going to find me? You'll find me when my devotees, my bud bhaktas, are gayanti, chanting my glories. There's where you can find me. <laughs> 
is a very direct statement that if you want to find Krishna, there's where you find him. When you chant his glories. Today is Ikadasi. It's a wonderful day for chanting the holy names of the Lord, which is one of the main ways by which we chant the glories of the Lord. We chant the glories of the Lord to become purified. We chant the glories of the Lord to experience the taste of the happiness that comes by that connection with Krishna through his glories. But we also, and most important, we chant the glories of the Lord just to please the Lord. And by when we chant the glories of the Lord, we connect ourselves with Krishna because Krishna says, hey, if you want to find me, that's where I am <laughs> when you're chanting my glories. Then I also come and listen. When, Ro when Rohini was in uh, Dwarka speaking to the queens about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan as he was a young boy, <laughs> All the queens became absorbed listening to Rohini. And then also Krishna found out, Balaram found out, Subhadra, they all found out, and they came, and they all started to listen. And Krishna became ecstatic hearing his own glories in relationship to the love that his devotees have with him. Because Krishna becomes overwhelmed with happiness when he hears about the, the love of his devotees, as we chant the glories of his, of the, the, the uh, chant his glories, and that, that attracts Krishna more and more. And that attraction bring, brings the presence of Krishna into the heart and mind of his devotee. So here's the process. It's very, very easy to chant the glories of the Lord or to hear the glories of the Lord, to remember the glories of the Lord. These three are the three main activities of the process of bhakti. Shravanam, kirtanam, smarnam. Without shravanam and kirtanam, smarnam doesn't manifest. Smarnam means to remember the Lord. Remembrance comes also even without chanting the glories of the Lord when Shravanam and Kirtanam become perfected. So one who sufficiently hears and chants the glories of the Lord, it becomes easy and natural to remember the Lord even when they're not chanting the glories of the Lord. The mind becomes fixed in Krishna. They, they see Krishna within their minds. They feel Krishna within their hearts. And they think of Krishna as pastimes or his activities with his devotees, his qualities he displays in relationship to his devotees. And this is the process of bhakti. Don't look anything, don't look everywhere else. We have our service to do, and that's important, because our service connects us with the process of bhakti. And those that service is given by Krishna through the spiritual master, and that is important because it allows us to divert our attention towards pleasing Krishna by offering something to him in devotional service. But the essence and what is highly recommended and what is taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Acharyas is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And especially when we engage in Nam Sankirtan, Nami Krishna Varna Tusam Krishna Sangopanga Saparshadam Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajanti Hi Sumeda Saha. Uh, Sumeda Medasa means intelligence. Su means good or, you know, full intelligence. There's another word called Alpa Medasa. Alpa means meager or little, no intelligence. As Prabhupada said, head filled with cow dung, nothing else is in there. And that means people who have no intelligence, they don't understand how wonderful it is to engage in Nam Sankirtan because that brings smarnam quickly. Because in Nam Sankirtan, Sravanam and Kirtanam are emphasized throughout. And then 
smarnam, which is remembering Krishna, becomes so easily available through the chanting. And when, when that becomes purified to the point of perfection, then one can remember Krishna always. Just like they asked Srila Prabhupada, are you remembering Krishna? When, when did you start remembering Krishna? Yeah, they asked him, when was the beginning of your remember? Prabhupada said, I cannot remember a time that I did not remember Krishna. <laughs> he was always remembering Krishna. <laughs> and he's also teaching the process by which we can also remember Krishna. <laughs> so, yes, everything belongs to Krishna, all the energies, all the facilities, everything is connected with him directly or indirectly through his different energies. But ultimately, when Nam Sankirtan, or, or just like we hear Maharaj Parikshit, he's sitting on the banks of the Ganges. He has a few days left to live. He's simply absorbed in hearing the glories of the Lord. He's so absorbed, he doesn't want to take time to maintain his body like he normally did. He forgets about eating, he forgets about sleeping, he forgets about everything. He simply wants to hear the glories of the Lord. So what does that say? That says that the glories of the Lord are so complete and powerful that one becomes, when one becomes fixed in hearing the glories of the Lord, there's nothing else to achieve. <laughs> then one is actually uh, placing their consciousness in the spiritual realm. <laughs> and Krishna becomes visible <clears throat> to, in the mind of a devotee when that, when that uh, hearing and chanting becomes complete. <clears throat> but even, even at any stage of, <clears throat> even at any stage of hearing and chanting, there is freedom from material suffering. There is, there is uh, uh, a taste, a sweet taste that comes by way of the chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord. Even in the initial stages when one begins the process, there is always an elevation towards spiritual awareness that comes. So this is the process. <clears throat> We have to do our service, whatever it is. But we also know that the ultimate principle of devotional service is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Sadhana and what we say, seva. Seva means service. Sadhana means hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And these two combined will bring, to, bring one to sadhya. Sadhya means the goal, which is prema pumarta maha, developing not developing, but revealing our natural love for Krishna, which is dormant within the heart. Mm -hmm. And so this verse, although it's very short and right to the point, Prabhupada puts so much in a few lines. <laughs> he explains how everything is Krishna and nothing is outside of Krishna. And he shows by making one statement that all you have to do is chant his glories. <laughs> And then everything else will follow automatically. So uh, take time. And we see what is Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the pure devotees chanting the glories of the Lord and serving the Lord in different ways. That is Bhagavatam. Krishna teaches the preliminary stages of Bhagavatam in the Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> <coughs> where he very clearly explains who he is, who we are, what is this material energy, how does it work, and why, we're, why, why we get suffering and enjoyment from the activities we perform in this material world. And ultimately, Bhagavatam begins by teaching us how to get out of the material world by creating a spiritual consciousness which elevates one to the spiritual world. And that's for hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Actually, the Yakadasi day is meant simply for that. That's all it's meant for. The actual 
uh, principle of Akadasi is to not to eat anything or drink any water the whole day and simply chant 24 hours from sunrise to sunrise, <clears throat> 24 hours of simply chanting the holy names of the Lord. You may think, wow, that's impossible. No, it's not. Once you begin the process and you stay fixed in the process of chanting, then there is a taste that awakens in that chanting, comes automatically by continuous chanting. And then one starts to understand, oh yes, now I understand when they say the holy name is sweet, yes. And then one will easily continue to chant. There are devotees I know who chant 192 rounds on near Jalakalasi, which comes every year in the month of June. And on every Akadasi, they chant 64 rounds. So <clears throat> um, once you understand the process and take it to it with determination, because if we're not determined, we will fall back into our old lazy way of doing things and push Krishna consciousness to a, a sideline as just a small part of my life and then go on with our material activities and considering my the success of my material activities is the success of my life, which they're not. All these things will come and go. Material activities are necessary, but they're not in the principle of happiness either. So the pro process is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Krishna Smaranam. <laughs> And Krishna speaks this verse himself, Tatra Tistami Narada Yantra Gayanti Mad Bhakta. Um, Nina, maybe you can go find this verse somewhere with, along with the translation. It's nice to read this particular verse. Hare Krishna Maharaj, are you talking about the Nam Tistami Vaikunta? Yeah, this verse that's mentioned here at the very end. Yeah. Tatra yes. that's, um, that's That's the third and fourth line. Yeah. You're going to need um, you know, the first line. But you can find it by using the third and fourth line also. You can find it in in 43035 if you look for 43035. Yes, Maharaj, I'm just, yeah. It's given yes. in this purport. Yes. Naham Tistami Vaikunte Yoginam Naham Tistami Vaikunte Narada Yantra Gayanti Mad Bhakta. And this is the Lord speaking himself. I am not in Vaikuntha, nor in the hearts of the yogis. I remain where my devotees engage in glorifying my activities. It is under, this be understood that the person does not leave the company of his devotees. You know, that's an extra line, but the actual verse ends with my devotees engage in glorifying my activities. So, so yeah, that's from, uh, I believe that's from Padma Purana. Okay, so somebody says, well, what is Krishna consciousness about? It's hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Someone, if, you, if someone says, I have so many problems in devotional service, you ask them, how much time are you giving to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord? It all comes back to that. <laughs> okay. Open it up for discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful class. We are always grateful for your kind association, Prabhu Maharaj. So um, naturally, you so wonderfully mentioned, Maharaj, that all the problem begins is that because we want to enjoy separately from Lord Krishna. 
and we are eternal soul, we are not separate from him, yet the desire occurs. So this is this age-old question. Probably you have heard this many times. Can you put up the uh, volume? All of, yeah, all the devotees online. You can start seeing everyone. I don't know what feature that is. Devotees, would you be kindly able to uh, you, you turn have, on your videos? You have to turn, you have to configure. Right now, can you put gallery view so that Maharaj can see everyone? Yeah, put, go to gallery. gallery. View. Mm -hmm. Are you able to see gallery view now? No. <laughs> it's a partial gallery. It's not a complete one. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, you can change yourself as well by okay. just changing the view to gallery view. I got it. Okay, there it is. Okay, good. Everybody's there online. Okay, so... Uh, so yes, Maharaj, the age-old question that we are we are the eternal servitor of Lord Krishna. We come from original Golok Dham itself. And how does the desire enter our mind or heart to enjoy separately? Well, Krishna mentions in the first verse of the first canto in Srimad Bhagavatam that um, Krishna is Swarat. Swarat means completely independent. Mm -hmm. He's not dependent on anything and nothing can control him. He is completely independent. But, and because we are his part and parcel, in other words, we're in, we're, a, we're an element of Krishna also, and we have many of the same qualities he has. So we also have this element of swarat. But we don't have it like Krishna has it. We have it partially. So that swarat is, well, we can understand, we can choose what to do, right? We, we chose to be here online today. We could have chose to be somewhere else today. So we have that independence. And Krishna doesn't inf interfere with your independence. And that is part of the soul's existence. Mm -hmm. So when you misuse that independence and you want to do something else separate from Krishna, then that is the initial uh, deviation. And then that allows you to fall into the material world to fulfill that desire become like Krishna, but at the same time, not like Krishna. Krishna is the supreme controller and he is the supreme enjoyer. So take a look at this material world. What is people doing here? They're trying to control so they can enjoy. That's all. Same thing. We're trying to imitate Krishna and by in this material world by doing the same thing he, he is. We're controlling whatever little bit of environment we, we gather together. We control our family members, our friends. We control our possessions. We control, sometimes we get jobs to control people on the outside. <laughs> and then what is our goal? We want some satisfaction, some happiness from our attempts at controlling. So that's all. And so because we act independently of our position, we are actually the servant. We are not the enjoyer or the controller. We're the servant. And so therefore we're acting outside of our natural constitutional position. When we come back to the mood of service, and that mood is directed towards Krishna, because ultimately, even in this material world, in our attempt to enjoy and control, we find ourselves serving also. We're serving our friends, we're serving our family members, we're serving our boss in our job, we're serving our dog. Just like I go out for a walk and I see people walking their dogs. Everybody's got dogs and the dog is in control and the masters and the guy on the holding the leash is walking his dog. The dog is going this way and that way, and the 
The owner is following the dog wherever he goes. So they serve their dogs. They serve every, so many things. So, but in that type of service, there's no real happiness and satisfaction. So we can't get away from the service mood, but we but we have to direct that service mood towards Krishna. And that's where it belongs because that's the origin of that service mood. We are Jivaya Surupai Krishna and Nityadas. As Lord Chaitanya has explained, we are eternal servants of the Supreme Lord. But we come to this material world and we give up the service of the Lord and we take up the service of the of everything else in this world. And that's called illusion. And we expect to be happy, <laughs> which is impossible. <laughs> if you're acting outside of your nature, how can you be happy? When you're when you're connected to what you actually are, then you're acting according to your nature. And that nature is to serve, but to serve the Supreme Lord. Our material nature says to serve, you know, the things of this world. And so we do that and we expect satisfaction from that. But because this world is always changing, it's never stable. Things are moving. It's always mixing. And there's different aspects to it. Some things are good. Some things are bad. And some things are a mixture of good and bad. So we're always getting these three results. Some things give us some satisfaction. Other things leave us completely despondent and unhappy. And then sometimes we get a partial manifestation of both. But then we go on. But the time element ultimately is the factor that's, that puts a halt to all of our attempts to try to enjoy separately from Krishna. <laughs> So, therefore, it's explained that just serve the Supreme Lord. But not just like part-time. If you want part-time service of the Supreme Lord, you'll get the Lord very little. And Krishna is not available to devotees who mix material life with spiritual life. He's not available. You can get some idea of Krishna, but you can't taste that relationship. You can only taste it when you give up your desire to enjoy in this material world and you fix your desire on how to make Krishna happy. That doesn't mean you stop your responsibilities in this material world. It means we just stop trying to enjoy these things. We do them simply as a, as a requirement, just like just like we have to uh, we have to take care of our nature so we go into the bathroom it's not that wow i'm going to the bathroom now i'm going to really enjoy it. no you just take care of your nature and you get done and you get out and so <laughs> it's, it's something yeah that's required that's all same with everything in this material world it's just some responsibility we have accepted because we've accepted a material body so we have to eat, we have to sleep, we do, we take care of family members, we need some pecuniary re, uh, remuneration in order to do things. All these things are what is called a burden. It's a necessary burden. But we don't do them for enjoyment. We do them just because they, they have to get done. The enjoyment mood is that develops in our relationship with you. There's what we enjoy when we serve Krishna, and especially when we hear and chant the glories of the Lord and in the association of devotees. As Bhagavatam says, Satam prasangam mamavirya samvido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata. Go to this verse. Um, it's the third canto. <clears throat> 25th chapter, verse number 25, 3, 25, 25. This is a very clear explanation of what I've been trying to say. Mm -hmm. 3, 25, 25. Oh, 
open it up. <laughs> you got your arrow there, but you got to open it up. Yes, Thank yes, so Maharaj. Just... It's taking it's it's uh, taking a little bit of time. Go down, go down one point to the next one down. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So somebody read, I'll read the Sanskrit, somebody read the translation. Satam prasangam mama virya samvido, bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata, tajosanat aspa pavarga vartmani, strada, vatir bhaktir anukramishyati. Carefully listen to this verse. In the association of pure devotees, Discussion of the past times and activities of Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation and therefore he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. So here's the process. In the association of devotees, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. It's nectar. Rasayana kata. That's the word. Rasayana kata. Rasam. Rasayana means nectar. That kata which gives satisfaction, pleasure to the ear and to the heart. There's another nice verse by Srila Rupa Goswami also. It's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I think it's in Anchalila, chapter one. And the first word is Tunde, T T U T T U N D E. Let me see if I can get you the exact. Uh, I think I can give you the exact reference here. This one will, that's it, you got it. Great. Tunde tavina ratim vatana tutunda vali labdya karna kroda kambinin gata tayate karna bude yas. Please Lab mute yourself, devotees. Please Lab mute yourself. Chaitam Praganam Sangini Vijayate Samvendriyanam Kritam No Jana Janite Kriya Beer Amrita Krishnaita Varna Dwayi. You can read that translation. If you could bring up the verse, yes. So translation by His Holiness, um, by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. I do not know. Uh, I tra do this translation trust. is this translation is Rupa Goswami's translation. Oh, Rupa Goswami's translation. I do not know how much nectar the two syllables Krishna have produced. When the holy name of Krishna is chanted. It appears to dance within the mouth. We then desire many, many mouths. When that name enters the holes of the ears, we desire many millions of ears. And when the holy name dances in the courtyard of the heart, it conquers the activities of the mind, and therefore all senses become inert. When Shaitani Mahaprabhu heard Rupa Goswami recite this, he went mad. <laughs> he he became so happy and so ecstatic, he just started to glorify Rupa Goswami with hundreds of mouths. So here, this is um, this is an example of ecstatic chanting. This is this is on a high stage of bhakti, of course. But just to give you an indication of how how what does this name Krishna contain? We cannot understand it. It's not possible to, you know. Okay. We have a question there. 
Yes, Krishna Kaviraj Prabhuji, if you would like to go ahead and ask your question, please. Thank you, Maharaj, for wonderful. Thank you very much. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. All glories to all of the Vaishnavas. Maharaj, uh, you said that uh, when anything happens, there's a immediate cause and a remote cause. And the remote cause was Krishna. Sometimes it's difficult to understand why Krishna has done certain things. How can we how can we understand why well, he's doing something or what he's trying to teach us? I think there's a clarification that needs to be mentioned. Mm. The three modes of material nature work according to his arrangement when we perform a material activity there is a result and that result is connected to the object by which we can perceive for instance um, a person will um, you know have Prabhupada, Prabhupada was giving the example. He said, here, when one devotee was, Prabhupada was making this point, that there's, a, there's, a, you, there's an unseen cause behind everything that happens. So one devotee said, well, Prabhupada, I was in the shower this morning, and the shower piece fell down and hit me on the head. So Prabhupada said, because you were a rascal, that's why. <laughs> so the cause was, because he was a rascal, the shower piece fell and gave him a little punishment <laughs> for his rascaldom. So in other words, within the confounds of the three modes of material energy, we have a certain type of behavior that's meant to work. There's behavior in the mode of goodness, behavior in the mode of passion, behavior in the mode of ignorance. So when we plug in to one of those modes, we're going to get a reaction according to the nature of that mode. And the higher the mode, the better the material reaction is. But it's all happening by the three modes of material nature. So you might say the three modes of material nature are the remote cause for all material activities. But then when it comes to spiritual activities, which are outside of the three act modes of material energy, then Krishna is directly responsible for that. He allows things to happen to his devotee or doesn't, to elevate him in Krishna consciousness, to purify him, to bring him closer to Krishna. Now, even in the material realm, Krishna sets the three modes in place in other words through his energies like lord brahma he teaches how the material world should be arranged so ultimately from that perspective he is also the remote cause of everything material and spiritual just like a watchmaker will make a watch and then he'll have nothing to do with the operations of the watch, but because he put it in place, it works in a certain way. This material energy works in a certain way. Shristi stisti palaya sadayeka chayeva iva ivati durga ichana rupa apay apas taste te sa govinda mari purusham tamaham bhajami. So Maya is a shadow reflection of Krishna. For the to give the results of the activities of people in the material world, but ultimately, when you take it back to its original source, as this verse we were to read the verse we were reading today, Krishna is the source of everything, material and spiritual. So, in one sense, in the real sense, he is the remote cause of everything. But you can't blame Krishna for what happens in the material world that's because of your activity you're going to get a result accordingly that's all 
If you do pious activities, you'll get pious results. If you get impious activities, you do get impious results. So that's how the material energy works. Mm -hmm. it's Thank you, Maharaj. If we engaged in service or spiritual activity, and he's given us service and he's given us the inspiration, the motivation, enthusiasm to carry that service out. And then suddenly he stops you in your tracks. He doesn't so stop how can you. We understand. He doesn't or some, something something that appears to be negative, but how can we learn the lesson from he doesn't what? stop he's not stopping you. You stop yourself. <laughs> When it comes to devotional service, he's encouraging. Mm -hmm. He's also directing you through his different energy, especially the spiritual master. So he's not stopping anything. <laughs> he's initiating uh, the opportunity for us to serve through his different energies. That's all. If the energies are working in a certain way, then nothing will stop us. I mean, if, we, if we're working in the right way, if we make a mistake or do something wrong, we stop ourselves or mm -hmm. give up. <laughs> you know, Krishna is always the well-wisher of everyone, even the non-devotees. But devotees know that you know, behind everything is is the uh, the hand of the Lord, either material or spiritual. And Krishna says, "I have nothing to do with the happiness and distress in the material world." Like I said, watch make watch maker makes a watch, puts it in practice, and it works. Puts it in function, and it works accordingly. So. If you don't know how this material energy works, then read the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> it teaches you how the material energy works. <laughs> but from from if you're engaged in devotional service, he doesn't stop you. He may also act in such a way as to direct you to something that is more appropriate and beneficial for your spiritual advancement that he may also do you might be you may think well i'm going to serve this way but it may not be the best for your spiritual advancement so krishna might give you some indication through his energy that stop doing this service and do this other service that's also Krishna's mercy. But then again, you have to know. Therefore, if we guess, and there's a good chance we might guess wrong, well, the best thing to do is work under the guidance of your spiritual authority. Then you have no problems. And when you don't consult spiritual authorities and you just do things accordingly then when things go right you think oh i did it right when things go wrong you become bewildered but things going wrong doesn't mean you you were doing the wrong thing it's just it's just the way that the way that it works sometimes for krishna there's no right and wrong So stop blaming Krishna. <laughs> Everybody likes to blame him for something. Thank you. He's your best friend. He says, he says, Suidam Sarvadehinam, I am the friend of all living entities. He's the real friend. Why? Because he has your welfare at heart. He knows what's good for you. You don't. You may think you do.
And that's why we have to consult. And that's why in order to make progress in the spiritual life, the third stage of bhakti, after coming in contact with the devotees, is to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. And stay connected to his instructions and guidance. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Did you get it? Yes. I might have to come back and ask you something specifically later. I guess you didn't get it. <laughs> I get it. I just need to know. When you said that he might be, he might be suggesting that you do service differently or a different service, and I kind of like feel that that might be something that he was trying to tell me. Yeah, that's why we have association with devotees. Devotees also help us in, in that. Mm. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Okay. Thank you. Radha Jyoti Mataji, would you like to go ahead with your question, Mata? Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna and pronounce to you. Hare Krishna, pronounce Maharajji. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, my question to you is, when we are doing some services, then, uh, then we know that we have an instructions or guidelines and we are happy to serve. But uh, there, there is... There are times when we do services by our own or under the guidance of other Vaishnavas or for other Vaish other devotees we do. At that time, uh, we I am doing the same same with the same attitude, but I am not able to understand. Uh, is the is the attitude or the service that I am doing? Am I doing for myself for the my own satisfaction? Or I'm doing for the Lord. This is a, a lot of confusion. It's happening uh, every time because I'm not able to understand what exactly is happening while doing the service. So could you please tell me how I should understand that my service is reaching to Lord or not? Hare Krishna. Well, hmm. when you take guidance and direction and service, then you're doing it for the Lord. When you do it without guidance and direction, you, you're you mixing your own ideas in with the devotional service. And there's some benefit from that because it's still devotional service. But not the same benefit. Therefore, the satisfaction may not be complete. So always, you know, if you're not, sh if you're sure, then you don't have to worry. Go on with your service. If you have some doubts, then you ask Yes, the ask the other devotees, ask your spiritual master, ask someone who is on the same level of your spiritual master. This is uh, Prabhupada set up this society as a family, and the family members are meant to work together to support the goal of the family, which is to get everyone to become Krishna conscious. So we take help wherever help is available. We take advice, we take help in different ways. And that the more we associate with devotees, the more easier it becomes to do your devotional service because then you start to learn how to do things. So don't get discouraged. Even if you decide to do something because of your own ideas, if you connect it with Krishna, then that's devotional service. Say you want to distribute prasadam. No one's told you to do it. So you think, all right, so I'll, uh, I'll cook some nice sweets and I'll go to the program and I'll distribute the prasadam to all the devotees. So that's bhakti. No one told you to do it. It was an inspiration. That's fine. 
you decide, oh, I wanna, well, I want to preach. Well, what can I do to preach? All right, let me get a few books. I'll go outside and try to meet some people and convince them to take a book. That's devotional service. We don't have to be told every minute what to do, but when you're not sure, if you have doubts, then you should ask. But the Lord will be happy if we do the devotional service when we are not told to do it. And we will, we, I'm not that fortunate to be under uh, a senior devotee all the time. All right, I'm so, not able to meet my spiritual master. I have not seen him from last one year, nor my Shiksha Guru. Then how I'll understand what exactly, because those who are are in physical, physical they, uh, those who are taking the physical instructions, they are very fortunate enough, isn't it? I am just listening and I'm doing whatever I could do, but I'm not understanding it's reaching or not. It is. Do you, do you listen to your, your spiritual master's uh, classes? You can listen online. Every spiritual master using... His classes are online somewhere. You can go to, you know, uh, what is it? Desire Tree, ISKCON Desire Tree. You have practically all of the spiritual masters who ever gave classes, all of their classes are listed there. If you listen to your spiritual master's classes, you, you get, you'll get your answers. Even if you don't ask any questions, the answers will come automatically. Yes, it happens many a times. Yeah. So I I should keep doing my services, whatever I could understand, and all the services that I have been told. Yeah. Without and when it will when I'll have the doubts, I'll ask, isn't it? Perfect. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And your association is divine. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji, for your such a sweet question. And all glories to His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Any further questions, devotees? What happened to Sri Devi? She for, she's at her at a sink. We had no questions today, Sri Devi. Hmm. Guru Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances as well as my humble apologies. I joined the class half an hour late. So I must humbly say that I'm listening still and I don't have any questions at the moment, Guru Maharaj. Please forgive me. Oh, okay. Uh, that's, an, that's a rarity, but anyway. <laughs> okay. Madhaji gave a wonderful class like two weeks ago. Maharaj, when you were not able to join, Mataji was so enthusiastic. She motivated all of us. It was so nice of you, Shridhar you know, Mataji. He's always enthusiastic for everything, material and spiritual. <laughs> Is that okay or that's not allowed, Maharaj? That's a very important question, if I may ask. That's a Gupta statement. Don't worry about it. <laughs> He's very enthusiastic. Prabhupada said, enthusiasm is catchy. If you're enthusiastic, you can make others enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. It's all your mercy, Guru Maharaj. It's all your mercy. I'm an undeserving sinner who has received unbelievable mercy. That's all I can say. So, any more questions, comments? <laughs> Can I ask one more question? Of course. Yesterday there was session, and uh, and uh, His Grace was uh, was explaining about the ego, which is purified, and uh, and there there was an explanation, but because of constraint, he skipped the class. So I wanted to ask, uh, there is a pur purity in Krishna consciousness and then the we are serving as a servant. 
and a false ego is going to purify so what is the difference between being pure or purity that we should look up to and the false ego that is going to purify as in servant of lord i didn't i don't understand the question <laughs> The question is, uh, the ego, the false ego that we are, uh, we are having, uh, the material false ego that I am having. When I came in Krishna consciousness, then I understood that I am a servant, and then I am trying to practice it, so that my false ego will be purified by chanting and the devotional service. But there is an another concept of being pure, isn't it? So, what is the difference between both the things? being pure in krishna consciousness and the false ego that is going to purify even if the false ego is still there if you're serving purely although you're still maybe under the uh still have material desires and the false ego is still there you know in other words you may not know how to do something but if the spiritual master tells you do it like this with the idea of doing it in this mood, and you do it, that's pure. You may not be pure, but still, if you act purely, that is a pure activity. So you can act purely, even though you're not pure, if you follow the pure process, that's all. And if you continue to do that, then you will eventually reach purity completely. Is that clear? So purity in Krishna consciousness is at very high level. You try to understand there's two kinds of purity. And that's the basic yes. question. Acting purity, acting purely and becoming pure. You can act purely without become without being pure. You can act pure without being pure. That means you follow the process exactly how it's given. You're mm -hmm. still not pure. It's like taking a shower. As soon as you get in the shower, you're not clean yet. But because you're in the shower, you're getting to the process of being clean. You're cleaning, but you're not fully clean. So in the same way, if we act purely in Krishna consciousness, we'll become pure in due course of time if we stay in the process. It's very it's easy. It's very hard. Very easy. It's hard for me. It's very easy to understand. If I tell you, do this in this way, and you do it, that's acting purely, mm -hmm. even though you may not be pure. Mm -hmm. If I tell the child that this is a microphone, the child may not know what a microphone is, but the, the child knows, says, oh, I heard from my father that this is a microphone. So he takes the microphone, he says to someone else, this is a microphone. So he's perfectly correct. But even he may not know what a microphone is. He simply is repeating. So if we're acting in by the instructions of the spiritual master, that is pure activity. Although we are not yet fully purified. Got it? Yes, yes, yes 100%. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Shri Mataji, we see your hand raised. <laughs> yes, Mataji. Thank you so much for giving me a chance. My humble obeisance is Guru Maharaj again. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I was also thinking, as you said, in the association of devotees, we learn so many things. Our anarthas get eliminated. We get an opportunity to understand ourselves better. So if we somehow are unable to associate with devotees or we have lived, say, far away from devotees for a very long time, then does it mean that our anarthas will not go away? Part of the process is, and a very essential part of the process is Sadhu Sangha. That means you're not following the process properly. So, therefore, you the process will be very slow. 
or maybe not at all. So the first thing that's mentioned is sadhu sangha, associating with devotees, especially devotees who are more advanced. Prabhupada made a very simple statement. He said, three things are important in Krishna consciousness, association, association, association. When you want to emphasize something, you say it thrice. That's a statement from Shastra, that when you mention something three times, there's no, no second consideration. That's why Lord Chaitanya says, Harinam, 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 Eva Kevalo, Kolon, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva, Nasti Eva. Chant the holy name, chant the holy name, chant the holy name. There's no other way, no other way, no other way. Three times for emphasis. Prabhupada used a very simple example. He said, when you tell a child something, they may not do it. But if you say it three times, they'll get it. <laughs> Thrice means absolute. So you can't skirt the process and expect to get the benefit of the process. Mm, association, right. association is the essence of the process. In association we chant, in association we serve, in association we hear, in association we learn, in association we get purified. <laughs> That's why we have so many programs. Why? So just to bring about association. So just to confirm, Guru Maharaj, attending the morning program actually gives us all the whole uh, the whole nine yards in the sense that we are hearing the holy name, we are chanting with the devotees, we are engaging in a worship of the Lord, the Arti, Mangalarti, Darshanarti. We attend in the Srimad Bhagavatam class and getting our doubts clarified. So that morning program is packed with everything. Is that correct to say? Yes, but the end, then after that, you're going to finish the whole morning program, take your breakfast and go to sleep, right? No, <laughs> no, no. no, it enthuses you for the rest of the day. That's what I mean. If you're, actually, if you're actually there in the morning program, you'll be inspired to serve as soon as you finish the morning program. You'll have that service mood. It'll be strong. Yeah. So you add sadhana and you add, add seva with sadhana. They're inseparable, but sadhana is first. Sadhana is the morning program. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, maybe we can, we're about 20 minutes over time now. Okay. So you yeah. can stop there. Go ahead, Maharaj. What were you saying? Thank you, Shri Maharaj. You can stop sitting. Yes. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept Mahamali Bhisan says, Thou Gosh Tishan Prabhat. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your wonderful class and very nice, uh, you know, question and answer. Thank you so much for your time and association, Maharaj. We are so blessed to have you on the call. Yeah, today is a nice day. Today is a Kadasi. Great chance, mm -hmm. great opportunity. Kadasi is called Happy Kadashi. Devotion. 
Kalasi is called the mother of devotion. This is the opportunity to make very nice progress and purification on this day by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord throughout the day. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yes, we are so blessed to have you. Thank you for your association, Maharaj. We really mean it from the bottom of our heart. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in this call every Thank other you. week. It's wonderful to serve you, Maharaj. Please accept my friend. Krishna Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Devotees will go ahead and offer our obeisances to His Holiness's lotus feet. One shakal